Hi everyone! I recorded this short video to show how easily you can create a fire effect using particles in God of War. I'm already using this effect in my own game and I think it looks quite decent. Let's create a particle fire together from scratch. Okay, let's start with a blank scene, which is no 3D, so I click here to 3D scene and then right click the root node, add child node and select GPU particles 3D. Very well, as you can see, there are some warnings next to the node. Nothing is visible because meshes have not been assigned to draw passes and material to process the particles is not assigned, so no behavior is imprinted. So, we want to start with setting up a draw pass. But before we do that, let me get rid of these gizmos that would obstruct the view a little bit. So first we go here to view, gizmos, and GPU particles 3D, we just click the eye and it's gone. And as for the move gizmo, we simply switch here to show list of selectable nodes and position clicked. Click and it's gone. If you want to have it back, just click here and it's restored. Very well, let's proceed to build a fire. So we uh, find the inspector here and first step would be to uh, expand draw passes and add a pass to pass one, click and do a new quad mesh. Of course it would be possible to load your own texture but for now we'll make do with a quad mesh. As, you, as you'll see, the end result will still look quite nice. So we will click the mesh and add a new material here, new standard material 3D. Let's click the material and add some basic properties. First, transparency. We definitely want the fire to be transparent or semi-transparent, so it will blend with the background better. So instead of disabled, we select alpha. And of course, we need to set a blend mix. The best value here would be add. All right, now we want to disable shading because the fire shouldn't reflect any light. Let's open here and instead of per pixel, we'll select unshade it. All right, and the last thing we will do here is to expand vertex color and select use as albedo. This is a property of a standard material and basically the checkbox means that the albedo color will be taken from vertices of the quad mesh. As it has an impact on the final fire appearance, let's set it on. Once the fire is complete, I can show the difference. Very well, but the fire is probably not always white. Let's expand albedo and select some better color. So for example, something going to orange. Yeah, that would be a good start. Okay, and we definitely want to fire always uh, face the camera. In this case, we need to use this billboard and select the mode to particle billboard. By the way, you might ask why I didn't just enable this mode and instead I selected this spe specific mode. Uh, the reason is uh, if I don't do that, certain particle specific settings in the process material would be ignored. For example, uh, the scale range. Okay, and speaking of scale, we, are, we need to enable keep scale, otherwise the scale would be totally uh, ignored anyway. That should be everything with the standard material, at least for now, and since there is still some kind of warning, we want to proceed with setting up the process material. So we scroll up, expand process material and select new particle process material. And as, as, as you can see, it's already doing something. The particles are free falling because there is some default gravity. We will address that very soon. Uh, let's click the process material and start with emission shape. Uh, in fact, we won't do anything here because I've been doing experiments with other shapes, for example, a sphere. 
but it seems that a point still gives the best results, so let's keep it as it is. It might be interesting to try multiple points, for example, to make the fire wider and with multiple flames, but that would require to import an emission point texture, and I don't have anything like that uh, right now. So let's keep it as a point. Now we want to set the direction, and since the fire would go up, we will set it for Y coordinate. So zero here and one here. Okay, still falling of course, because there is the gravity. Let's address that, but before that we will just change the spread to zero. Otherwise the flame would be just too wide and look unnatural. Let's open gravity and set it to zero here. And now nothing is falling, but also nothing is ascending, because we need to set the initial velocity. Let's give it minimum value 1 and the maximum 4, let's say. Now it looks a bit better, but still these squares are all, all the same. Let's give them some angular moment. So we will set the angular velocity from 0 to 40. And let's open angle, which is the initial tilt of this square. And let's make a random value of the full circle. Very well. And now, of course, these squares are still too big. It doesn't look like a fire, definitely. We need to scale it down. Let's open scale menu and set the scale a uh, range from point 0.1 to 1. All right, and now, of course, uh, we need to set the color of all this, uh, <coughs> all this um, particle material and elements. So let me just select the color band. No, no, no. Instead of color, we'll give it some variety and we will select this. Uh, initial ramp as a gradient. Let's click the gradient and click it again and let's set it up here. I'll click and this square will choose a similar color, color as we already have there. Okay. And the gradient needs some more tweaking or maybe not. I think it can we can experiment with that later. And we definitely need more particles here. Let's increase the amount from 8 to 200. All right. It starts looking like a fire now, but we want to decrease the lifetime because if each particle lives for one second, that would be definitely too long. Let's change it to 0.3. Okay. And Let's increase the randomness just to the maximum value. And one last thing, we want to open drawing and select or not local coordinates. Basically, this option makes sense if we want to move our fire along with the GPU particle 3D node transformations. For instance, if it works as a jet flame emitted from a moving spaceship. But if it's a stationary, you can leave it unchecked. However, in our case, we will select it. And uh, another thing in the drawing section, we usually want to change the drawing order to view depth. Particles are drawn in order of depth. And in fact, it doesn't have a big impact in case of a quad mesh we are using. But let's do it anyway to be ready for possible changes in the future. For instance, if we decide to change quad mesh to sphere mesh and make it out of little spheres. Okay, the fire is here, but it still looks more like a flamethrower instead of, say, a campfire. So let's shape the flames a bit more. But before we do that, it seems that I forgot to set up one more thing, which is linear acceleration to make the fire particles just slowly accelerate over time. So I set it to the range from 1 to 5 to make it look more natural. Okay, and now I think that the number of particles is still too low because you can see these squad meshes here, just too obvious. So I will increase that to 500. Okay. 
And now, as I've been talking about the shaping the flame, let's get back to the scale section and open a scale curve. We will set a new curve texture. Um, click it, click it, and select curves, curve. Click it again, and let's, for example, add a new point here. Put this down, and the other part, let's do this. Can you see how we can shape it? Okay. Perhaps something else could be improved. Yeah, let's do this. Uh, sorry. <laughs> this, I mean. Okay, this looks better, doesn't it? There are some more parameters we can experiment with. For example, uh, hue variation. We can use uh, min and max sliders to give the file a little variability in color tones. Well, let's just decrease this one. Uh, looks like a bit green. And this one. Yeah, something is definitely happening there. And another thing is we can play with turbulence. Let's turn it on. Okay, uh, now we can simulate something like a wind that directly affects the flame orientation. There are several sub-parameters here that I didn't explore yet, but it definitely looks like an interesting way to add more randomness to the particle effect. Let's just put it back. Very well, the basic tutorial is over. There are many other ways you can do to improve the look and feel of your fire. Uh, you can use a custom texture to replace the quad mesh or create a shader material instead of the standard one for some additional effects. Or you can add the second draw pass with a smoke and so on. But to create a simple fire, you should already know everything you need.